Oh no, this has never happened before. That must have hurt. Oh, these. Hi here, Philip there. And there is also five very unusual portfolio websites that will remind you what thinking out of the box actually is. So let's go. Number five, a portfolio website that features some dog tests in a trash can. This portfolio is by Luca Samarca, a web designer from Italy. It looks very familiar. I almost feel like I've seen it somewhere, but I can't quite place it, so let me know in the comments. I think it's a fun-looking original website. What's in a trash? I can't click this. <gasps> Can you imagine having a folder like this in real life? There is your official documents, Mrs. Merkel. What Luca is doing is a good life hack to create a website with great design, if you don't know how to. Looking at Luca's portfolio, this is not his case, definitely. He obviously knows how to design. But when you don't have any design education or background, and you don't have a budget to hire a designer, here is what you do. A good idea would be to take an existing visual system and create something new by following the rules of this existing visual system. Like, for instance, a subway map or a tube map if you are from Great Britain, a children's drawing, a supermarket receipt, an arcade game, or a blueprint of a motorized mechanical bulletproof anti-theft system, Hellfire the Punisher, aka the decoy grandmother. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that's... Uh, no. And then you repurpose it for your website. There is a but. I would try to be very careful with literal imitations. One woman was imitating her husband so well, she herself became her husband. This is all very confusing. So then, how do you imitate something and still create something innovative? The macOS could have been f***ed up unexpectedly, like melting folders or switching gravity on. There is no web browser here, which makes you think what happens if you add it. But you always have to ask why, though. Introducing a virus into macOS, Luca virus, would make sense in this case. 3D art. Ooh, Salvador Dali. Oh no. Oh no. So I think this website ticks those boxes of being fun and making you curious, which is always good because it makes your prospective client or employer stick around on your website and explore it. Number four. A website that features Arnold Schwarzenegger in a Sailor Moon dress. <clears throat> Sorry, that's... Um, you need to forget about this. Number four. A portfolio website that could burn things because of a freezing problem. He definitely looks like he had some... This portfolio is by Patrick Munar, who is an aspiring creative developer and an engineer. Sometimes you see websites where visuals feel a little bit over the top. And that is because they are probably not enough over the top. I think this is because when you choose a specific visual style, you need to follow through with it. You either go all the way or don't go there at all. Because otherwise it's like, look how careless and reckless I am, maybe. This is my reckless UI, I'm sorry, is this a bit in the way? I think Patrick is doing a decent job there. About the things I would improve on the website. The main one is probably 3GS optimization. Because when you build something that uses 3D heavily, you want to optimize it quite well, especially if it uses scroll events. And this is, I think, actually is a big problem with Patrick's website, because it freezes up on my M1 spec'd out MacBook. This has never happened before. One woman actually burned her father like this with a Mac Pro. I mean, it, was, it was not her father, it was a uh, holy father from the church. But still, this is not the point. The point is optimize the 3D stuff. If not optimized, 3D websites uh, freeze up the devices, heat them up and make them unresponsive, uh, which is not a good impression on your client, even if it's an impression of an Apple logo on a palm of their hand. And a sp oh, wait, 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 wait. And a, and a, oh, these scrolling assist. Let's call it that, because I have no idea what's the official name for it. With these scrolling assist websites, I always feel like my grandpa. I feel like he probably felt when my grandma would grab his steering wheel in critical situations. I mean, granted, it probably did save his life a couple of times, but I could bet that he wished it didn't. 
It feels quite unintuitive and it's not a good idea to take control away from the user, I think. Don't do it on your website. Otherwise, Patrick's website is a good example of using 3D unconventionally on a portfolio website. Number 3. A portfolio website that surprises you by being surprised by you. Eh, that... Oh, woo, wow. That must have hurt. Click to enable sounds. I think this portfolio by David, a UX and UI designer, is a good example of using sound in an unconventional way. Because sound is always a big problem in web design. Imagine you have a criminal uncle who lives with you. Now, imagine one day you are listening to your favorite song, A Barbie Girl by Aqua. And then your criminal uncle comes on in the background with a Soviet time prison folk song, a Siberian Wolf. And the website is actually worse than your criminal uncle because you're not expecting it to sing. A visitor to your website will most likely have their own music playing on their own device, which might result in a very surprising and unusual uh, remix of their favorite song. Does this sound... sound? Let me know in the comments. Uh, David, though, has solved this problem in a simple and very effective way. He switched the sound off by default, and then through the UX he made sure you would definitely switch it back on again in terms of assisted scroll that I complained about in the previous section, or the one before the previous section. If I click him, nothing is happening. I need to scroll. I think in this case it's actually fine here, because it's only used once here and it serves a specific purpose, to switch from the landing section of the site to the rest of the website. In this instance, my grandma only briefly grabs my grandpa's steering wheel, achieving a successful ejection of Zinaida, an annoying and an unwanted travel companion on the back seat. I also like the small detail of how the camera changes the viewpoint on scrolling. Sometimes a small detail can be a big thing, which is just not noticeable if you don't look, 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 if you don't look close enough. <gasps> Jesus. Number two. A portfolio website where Iron Man is hiding behind a bowl of ramen. Cooking your ramen. That's a... Uh, ramen? 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 Ramen. Ramen could be name. This portfolio is by Jesse, uh, who is a management consultant, data scientist and a developer. <gasps> So nice, and you can spin around this thing and zoom in, yes. <gasps> That's what he's doing. I like how the navigation is integrated in the world itself. It feels quite natural and it doesn't interrupt the overall experience. Jesse is a management consultant. He is a coder and a data scientist. And if you look at the portfolio, you'd see that most of it is not visual. Uh, Jesse's website is a very good example of presenting a non-visual portfolio in a very visual way. And finally, number one. A portfolio website where there is a beetroot. Press any key, tap the screen. Zzz. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, it makes a sound. This portfolio is by Aurelian, or Li An, a product designer and a code and UI enthusiast from China. It looks like uh, the author has successfully utilized a pig for his website. Which is always a challenge. It's very difficult to work with a pig. That's very, that's very interesting. Temperamental behavior of the UI. That's an interesting idea. Micro interactions. Ah. So it's not temperamental. You need to hold your cursor for longer there, that's why. And this portfolio feels like something that you have not seen before, or have, but a long time ago. It would be quite cool to see a website, not this one, but just generally a website, in a retro design. And specifically, a retro of web design. So not a website imitating a site of Spanish Inquisition. Although, the first ever website was launched in 1991 by a guy called Burns Lee from the organization called 
what was it called? So maybe a retro period starting from that period of time, where UX and UI from the past inspire something new. It'd be interesting to see what you could learn and repurpose from there. They used to work with very limited resources, and um, limited resources usually prompt creativity. And the downside of this site I won't talk about. I will just give you a slight hint as to what this is. Prisons drastic. Soap is so elastic. You can brush my hair and dress me everywhere. Incarceration. Fondling deprivation. Subscribe to this channel to stay inspired and remember how to think unconventionally. And also hit the bell, because it helps stopping all these doorbell thefts across the world. See you soon.